The two creative works that I have chosen to discuss are Life Among the Pitus by Sarah Wimica and Winona, A Tale of Life in the South and Southwest by Pauline Hopkins. Before I get started, I would just like to apologize in advance for any of the words that I cannot pronounce, and also I would not be addressing the n-word throughout this presentation. Life Among the Patoos is an autobiographical work written by Native American Sarah Wimica. This work describes Sarah's life among the Patoo culture and the white culture. Within this story, she incorporates traditions of her Native American people, such as oral traditions and historical events through her Native American lens. Whereas, in Pauline Hopkins' novel, Winona, she writes about interracial marriage, abduction into slavery, and rescue. This book displays social themes of barriers between whites and dark-skinned race. For my topic, I want to discuss how Hopkins and Wimica portray the dominant white male from a perspective of a woman. In this case, women are seen as a minority. Both authors are women, one Native American and the other African American, in comparison to the dominant white male. Furthermore, I want to focus on how both authors display their structure and narrative perspective through their own lens within the story. I also want to draw attention to how the white power can also be seen as helpful to the minorities. This can also be seen in Winona. The question I want to answer is how does Hopkins and Wimica display white dominant masculinization in the U.S. West using structure, character relations, and narrative perspective? So my developing thesis that I will be focusing on is how Hopkins and Wimica display the white dominant masculinization in the U.S. West using structure, character relations, and narrative perspective. Within Life Among the Patoos, Wimica shares multiple encounters with the whites. At the beginning of the story, her grandfather views the whites as his brothers. She, however, takes a while to warm up to the whites as she sees them as scary people who eat humans. Wimica and her tribe is constantly moving between their own land and the white people's land. An example that I will use of how the whites treated Wimica is, while while we were in the mountains hiding, the people that my grandfather called our white brothers came along to where our winter supplies were. They set everything we left on fire. It was a fearful sight. It was all we had for the winter, and it was all burnt during that night. My father took some of his men during that night to try and save some of it, but they could not. It had burnt down before they got there. This example shows the extreme measures that Sarah and her family went through. Her grandfather sees the whites as his brothers, but are portrayed as an enemy through Sarah's eyes as they burnt down all their supplies, thus showing the white dominance over the Native Americans. Within Winona, both Winona and Judah are treated as slaves when Thompson takes them to his place. Winona is half white and native black while Judah is black, both being the minorities in comparison to the white dominant male. Both Judah and Winona are mistreated by Thompson and the colonial, whereas Warren is a white male and ends up risking his life for Winona. We do see in this tale that Warren is a white male character, but he's on the side of the minorities trying to help Judah and Winona get out of slavery. Hopkins talks about how the white man tries to break Judah's happy spirits as a way of owning him as a slave. She states, Into this man's hands Judah was given body and soul. Chapter 4 In other words, Judah is now owned by Thompson, a white man, who has control over his happiness and his physical body and puts him to work as a slave. She portrays this white man as cruel, racist, and unfair. The literary devices I am considering are colloquialism, 
Imagery and Tone Within Hopkins' novel Winona, colloquialism is used as she uses informal and slang language to determine the white male. This provides more authenticity within Hopkins' writing to give the characters a Western American accent. This goes along with how Hopkins writes her own narrative perspective. Imagery Within Life Among the Patoos and Winona, both authors are very descriptive when they are on the White's territory. In Life Among the Patoos, Wimica describes her experience and the clothes and items the Whites give her and her family when they go to the camps. The novel Winona is very descriptive as well of how the Whites see the slaves within America compared to England. Finally, Tone. Both authors share their story as a journey with light at the end of the tunnel. Although it is a struggle, both characters in each novel grow through hardships with them being the minority in comparison to the white males and ends up breaking free. Secondary Sources So far, I found an article called We Are Going to Take That Right? Power and Plagiarism in Pauline Hopkins' Winona by Joanne Pelvitic. Within this article, it talks about how Hopkins uses plagiarism. Hopkins drew from other writers while combining her own idea of political conquest of the white dominant male. I think this will be a useful source to show how Hopkins displays her narrative perspective being a black woman writing from both interracial identity and white males. I also believe it will help talk about how she develops character relations within the novel. Another article that I found was All the Land Has Changed, Territorial Expansion and the Native American Past in Pauline Hopkins' Winona by Colleen O'Brien. This essay identifies echoes of what Hopkins perceived to be Native American culture. She incorporates inheritance and conquests with the foundation of freedom and justice. I can also relate this article to support my thesis with how Hopkins shows the white power over the indigenous and black race. Problems. The problems that I'm having is finding secondary sources for life among the Batus. I tried Google and Google Scholar and I cannot seem to find any. I am still currently searching for articles on the University of Guelph search engine. I already found two articles for Winona, which I mentioned before that I'm going to use in my essay. I have to find two more articles for Life Among the Patoos. I'm searching for anything related to the author in particular and her thought process upon writing and sharing this autobiography as a Native American. I also want to find something that shares her thoughts on the white dominant male when creating this process. Hopefully something comes up soon. I also had trouble formulating my thesis, which I might end up rewording, but let me know what you guys think. I do want to emphasize on how both Wimica and Hopkins grapple with this dominant masculinization in the US West while including territory on both dominant conditions. Through the structure, character relations, and narrative perspective, I believe I can prove my thesis. Thank you for watching my presentation on Life Among the Batus and Wana, A Tale of Life in the South and Southwest.